Today we're going to do compound prism, and this is uh, sort of a continuation of our basic prism that we've really started already, and we know how to calculate prism based on the power and how far we've moved lens. Remember Prentice's rule, power times decentration in millimeters divided by 10 tells us how much prism. And we know that if I move to plus lens up, uh, we get base up prism. If I move a minus lens up, I get base down. Uh, we can calculate the amount of prism with a given amount of decentration, pretty simple. Uh, now, with our lensometry, we actually can determine how much prism is in a lens by where it falls here. If we center a lens here, as long as the, lens, the lensometer has been uh, calibrated, which I can't stress enough, please always zero out, focus your, your lensometer, and always set the prism calibration tool to dead center. If that's off, everything you lay off, everything you inspect is always going to be wrong. If the lensometer has been calibrated and I find that my sphere and sill lines are exactly right in the middle, I know that that's the optical center or there's no prism at that point. I know that if it comes to a focus, say, here, right at this circle, for a traditional uh, lensometer, there are different designs here in the middle, but this one we're just going to use. The end of this is a quarter, first circle that's unlisted is a half, then one, two, and three diopters respectively. So if I laid out on my lensometer and I found the sphere and sill lines intersected right here, it would be two diopters base up. And that's regardless if it's a plus or a minus or plano with prism ground in. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a right or a left lens. Now, we did learn that if we're talking about horizontal prism, let's say it's right here, and it's not a half, not one, but if you follow that two, it's two to the right. Well, in this case, it does matter if it's a left or a right lens. And the way I always look at it is pretend that the eye is looking at you with the glasses in there. So let's use this one, for example. Let's do right here, two to our left. If I put this right here, it's not up, it's not down, it's not right, it's to the left, but for the right eye, to the left is base out. If this were the same to the left, and instead I did a left lens, but the left lens is looking at me, up is up, down is down, but this time anything to the right would be base out to the temple, anything to my left would be into the nose. So our original example, if I had right here, and you said, is this base in or base out, you would have to tell me whether you're looking at the right lens or the left lens. So let's argue we're looking at the left lens. The left lens, two to the right, would be not up, not down, not left, but to the right, and it's out towards the temple. So if I found a lens that was here for a left eye, it would be two prism adapters base out for a left lens. Now, we know how to read up, down, and left and right, and these are all pretty simple, but every once in a while we get a very complicated prescription and it deals with compound prism. And compound prism is just something that has both a vertical and a horizontal component. It's not very often, but in this case you're not going to have it fall along the horizontal line, you're not going to just have it fall along the vertical line, but it's going to be somewhere at an angle. So now it's important for us to determine if you get a prescription where someone has a binocular dysfunction, if somebody has had some type of a stroke, if somebody has had traumatic brain injury where the doctor wants a yoked prism at a very odd axis or odd direction, we need to be able to interpret that prescription from the doctor. So the way we do that is two ways. Compound prism can be written in one of two ways. They will give you an amount and a specified uh, axis. That's the first way. The second way they can write it is they'll give a uh, horizontal component. And it'd be help if I could spell. And a vertical component. Now, let's deal with the first one first. Um, I can either just say, hey, it's going to be three diopters at 
215 degrees, which, well, if you have been paying attention, you'll say we don't normally deal with numbers past 180. For compound prism, we do. Or they could say, I want, for a left eye, I want 2 in and 2 up. Well, if I have 2 in and 2 up, I would have both, and let's say it was a left eye, I would have, for the left eye, it would be 2 in and 2 up. Well, that's actually different than saying 2 uh, up and out, I'm sorry, up and in for a left eye. Uh, so we have to have two different ways to do it. So let's start with the axis version. So with this one, if the doctor gave us a, we want three prism diopters at 45 degrees. Well, remember, just like we do lens crosses, just like when we're looking here, we're looking at 0, 90, 180. Most of our prescriptions are written this way, and we stop at 180. But remember, a circle has 360 degrees. If we have a prescription where the sphere is at 45, and the sill is 90 degrees away, we just use the number above the 180 line to use to demarcate its axis. But it turns out the power doesn't just stay at 45, it also falls down here. We just don't use this because when we're writing prescriptions we want to have standardized notation, so we normally ignore these numbers down here. For compound prism we're not going to do that. We're going to go the full circle. So we're going to go 0, 45, 90, 135, 180, this gives me 270, and then back up to 359 degrees because we have from here and here a circle has uh, 360, 360 degrees. So 359 or 360, 10 to 360 are all the same all the way through here. So in this particular case, this doctor has written for us, and we'll give it, you have to specify the eye. So we're going to do, let's call it a right eye, and we're going to do three prism diopters at 45 degrees. Now where is that? Well, pretty simple. 0, 90, 45 degrees. If the base is at 45 degrees, we're going to do three prism diopters. So we're actually going to right there. That would be, and notice how it's not a zero, which would be purely a horizontal. It's not a vertical, um, but it's a little bit in between, and it's set at 45 degrees. If this is a right eye, though, remember as the eye is looking at us, it's up and in for a right eye. So this would be three prism doctors at 45 degrees. So this is where we would lock, if we're trying to lay it out to make a pair of eyeglasses, this is where we would put it. If we're verifying the prescription for accuracy, this is where we would have to put the uh, where the sphere and sill lines intersect right there because that's what the doctor ordered and we have to make sure we put it in the right place. Now, where this gets slightly more complicated for us because we've been dealing with numbers that are only from 0 to 180, well, if we went in for the right eye, if we went up for the right eye, or if we went out for the right eye, or even up and in, up and out for a right eye looking at us, that's all easy. But what happens if they start prescribing down? Well, what happens if the doctor said instead they can start using numbers that are from 180 to 270 to 359 or to 360, if you will? Now, if we, if the doctor wanted down and out at the equivalent of 45 degrees, well, simply 180 degrees away. This here, 180 plus 45, would give me 225 degrees. So if the doctor wrote a prescription that was right eye, three prism diopters, at 225 degrees, we'd be looking at right here, exactly opposite of the 45 degrees. So three prism diopters at base, 225 would be right here. If instead you wanted it down and in uh, for the right eye, well, and it was exactly opposite of 135, it would be 135 plus 180, 
315 degrees. So if the doctor asked for 315 degrees, two prism diopters in the right eye at 315 degrees, you would be at a perfectly oblique angle right there. Now, why this is important is it's not always exactly up, down, left, right, or at a 45 or 135 degree angle. You have some doctors that get a little fancy. They get a little crazy in there, and it's because that's what the patient needs. So you may get some very, very unique ones where what happens if the doctor said, I want two prism diopters, and not exactly down and out in the right eye, but I wanted it somewhere here. Well, in this case, they would specify two prism doctors at the base, and they would say, it's not at 180, but what happens if they said maybe 200 degrees? Well, it's not really at 45 degrees, but it's only about 20 degrees away from the 180, so you would want to put it right here. And you can actually spin your reticles to try to find exactly 20 degrees uh, up, down, and I can go over that. But I just want to show you if I do a test result, if I do a test or quiz, that you'd be able to say, if I ask for two diopters at 200 degrees, would it be here, would it be here, there, 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 there. Well, if you did a multiple choice, you know that this is absolutely the best result for all of those. And this is what we would be looking for. Now, anytime I get the amount and the direction, I should be able to find anywhere on here, if the doctor did a specified amount and a specified axis, I should be able to find on this reticle exactly where it should be. Now, the other option we have is let's go ahead and replace this new reticle, uh, that old reticle, with a new one because it was starting to get a little messy. And what we're going to do now is instead of doing an amount and an axis, we're going to do the second version was let's get a horizontal and a vertical component. So you tell me how much to go in which direction in a horizontal and a vertical, or vertical first and horizontal. I'm not sure that it matters that much. It's probably a, a doctor or a prescriber preference. But now if we had a right eye, let's say given the right eye, we want to go three down and three in. Well, what we would do is for that right eye, the right eye looking at us, down is down. So we're actually going to start with, from our optical center, we're going to take a little trip all the way down and a half, one, two, three down. But then it's almost like you're driving in an automobile and you're driving down city blocks. Well, you went down one block, but now you're going to go three base in. And remember, the right eye, up, down, left, right, in, is to our right. So we're going to go three prism diopters this way. However, where are we going to stop? Well, right here, if I'd gone here first, I'd have gone in and then down. Well, we're going to go right where these two would meet. Right there. So if we went three down and three in, the result it would be all the way over here. And I have to, now, this is a little tricky with a lensometer, but again, I can, we'll work with this in, in some type of a lab, but I want you to understand what this looks like. This is not three in and down because that's not how a triangle, that's not how city blocks work. If I did three, mile, three blocks down and three blocks over, I'm not three blocks from where I started. I'm more than that because now we're looking at right angles. Um, so in this particular case, this, you can actually figure out the numbers if you're interested in doing your trig. You can always use the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which would be if this were three down, this would be a, that would be b, that would be c. a squared would be three squared plus three squared equals c squared would give me nine plus nine equals c squared equals 18 equals c squared. Take the square root of both. And I think it's somewhere around 4.24, 4.25, 4.2-ish equals C. So in this case, I could write the exact same thing as 4.2 prism diopters at 
this angle here, which should be around 315 degrees, if my math is right, but this may be easier depending on what they're looking at. So three in and three down. Either way is fine. You can work back and forth if you're really good with trig. That's beyond the scope of our class here. But let's do another one. Let's do something that isn't exactly at 45 degrees and they're not exactly equal. So what we would do is, in this case, we're going to do, given, let's come up with a number, let's do 1 OS, 1 base in, and 3 diopters base down. So, just like you're driving a car, we're going to, this is the left eye now, let's do the in component first. It makes no difference whether you do this first or that first, you'll end up in the exact same spot. But in the left eye, we're going to go in by one and go down by three. And it would be right there. The resultant prism would be here. So again, one in and three down. Uh, it's not four down. You don't add it. You could do your a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But again, there are two ways to do it. Either I specify the, um, the amount and the direction in an act with a specified axis, or I give you two separate components, a horizontal and a vertical. So if I give you a multiple choice, even if you can't do the math, which is not, again, not within the purview of this course, we're not supposed to be experts in trig at this point, uh, I can certainly go through that if you'd like in an extra video, but for right now, if you can tell me approximately where we are in and down, if I give you a horizontal and a vertical component, um, you should be able to tell me whether it's closer to here or closer to there. Um, and I think that's where we're going to stop today. So uh, look at the notes section, look at this, I'll put some homework up on the blackboard, and then we'll go from there.